Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Correctional Systems. This is the online version and actually the COVID-19 version of the course. Um, we're we're going to be covering uh, various things about the correctional systems within the, uh, the United States and England. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about some other nations also. In this video, we're going to be looking at the way the course is set up in Blackboard, we're going to be looking at the course syllabus, the course requirements, and, and everything to kind of make sure you're on online with what's going on this semester. There is going to be a quiz that is going to take place right after this, and there's an ADA, um, excuse me, APA, not ADA, APA um, plagiarism video that you'll have to watch right after this. It's located right down there if you're watching this video in Blackboard. And you will um, need to make a 100 on that video in order to continue the course. <clears throat> Before we get into, into talking about the course, I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. I, I am a retired police officer, uh, actually twice retired. I spent 34 years as a full-time police officer, working very briefly for the Beaumont Police Department. I spent 21 years with the Galveston Police Department, uh, where I spent the majority of my career working in the identification division which is the Forensic Crime Scene Division, uh, Process Crime Scenes, uh, everything from car burglaries to murders, rapes, bank robberies, uh, you, you name it, we processed them all. I was a fingerprint examiner, I was a polygraph examiner, I worked in, in patrol, I worked as a patrol officer, as a patrol sergeant uh, on the night shift, that was fun actually. Um, I um, also spent a year as an uh, auto theft detective, and I spent my last year with the department, I was still in ID, but I was on loan to the IT section, and I was doing some computer programming, uh, helping develop the, uh, implement the new RMS computerized system that we, we got. And it was kind of our first move into a computerized a records management system. <clears throat> After I retired from the Galveston Police Department, I, I retired because Dickinson was looking for a forensic specialist. I uh, got hired as a detective there and was going to run the property room, do the forensic work, and as kind of a side, do the um, fraud investigation, because you know, they had a few forgeries back then, they had a few uh, credit card abuses, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that big of a crime. Well, you know, and starting in the early 2000s, about the only crime that went up in this country was fraud. And it's simply because technology changed and it became easier. So instead of spending most of my time working forensics in the property room, I spent most of my time working fraud cases, which actually was very interesting. Um, it was a great department to work for. We were a very small detective division. We had four detectives and a, 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 a captain, and um, we worked very closely together. Like we had a homicide. We averaged about one a year while I was there. The whole team came out, and we worked as a team. So that, that was a real good thing. As far as my educational career, I started out um, with an associate degree. It took me several years to get it, so I understand where y'all are coming from, if you're the ones that are in year four or five or so. <clears throat> but while I was working for the Galveston Police Department, I completed my associate degree at College of the Main over in Texas City. And um, the next semester, I moved on to a, the criminology program at the University of Houston in Clear Lake. And criminology is not necessarily my area of, of my love in the criminal justice field. I prefer the meat and potatoes behind what's going on as opposed to the theory, which is criminology is more of a theoretical type thing. Um, I was there and um, was going to complete my bachelor's degree when I told my father I wanted to be a police officer. It took him a little while to wrap his you know, fingers around it, but he decided, yeah, great, but he said, Please promise me you'll finish your, your, your education. So I was going to finish it. Well, this young lady named Alicia visited Galveston August 23rd, 1983, and when she did, she brought in some heavy winds and heavy rains, and she brought down my house. My house was destroyed by Hurricane Alicia, and so I took a year off from my college to rebuild. That year ended up becoming 23 years. It wasn't until after I went to the Law Enforcement Management Institute of Texas, and uh, which was a, a, a program that's housed at Sam Houston State, but they also have classes at Texas A&M and at uh, um, North Te um, Texas Women's University up in Denton. 
Uh, one of the instructors was a professor from Midwestern State University, which is an old school in um, Wichita Falls, Texas. They had an online bachelor program, and um, we, I get, decided to give it a try. And um, got there, and I, I realized I liked it. Kind of part of the reason I went back is my father was getting older, and I remembered that promise I made to him. I don't think he remembered it, but I remembered it. And at the time, my daughter was in high school, and I was kind of like, how can I tell her she has to finish her college uh, if I don't finish mine? So, you know, those two things kind of motivated me to, to uh, complete the degree. But once I got in, I realized I liked it. And then um, after I completed that program, I looked into going to Sam Houston State for their master's degree. It's a weekend program where you go um, Saturday and Sunday, eight-hour classes for uh, two years, year-round. And uh, it's a cohort program. You're in the classes with the same people from the beginning to the end. Um, I went through that and I really liked it. Uh, I was able to finish my bachelor's degree before my father passed away. Uh, he actually went to the graduation with me, as did my daughter, and kind of made her go to you know, babysit her grandpa. And um, the uh, unfortunately, before I finished my master's degree, he did pass away, but uh, he was there in spirit with me. So anyway, once I got my master's degree, I was kind of looking at retiring in about 10 years or so, which you know, I've been thinking about teaching in, in retirement. And I, I got a teaching job at you know, the University of Phoenix online. And, uh, I'm sad to say that um, I got a job at the University of Phoenix online. Um, if you went to University of Phoenix, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I just did not feel that that program was really out to educate. That, that program was out to make money. And I felt dirty when I'd teach the classes, but you know, just kind of didn't like it, but I, I did it for a little while and kept thinking. I always had one or two students who were, were good students and serious, and they made me come back. And that was about it. Um, it was just a program where you know, cheating was rampant. And, and um, I never had a class where I didn't catch somebody cheating. I think I had one exception. I had three people in one class, and nobody cheated in that class. But other than that, um, there was always at least one or two students who were buying papers for the class, and it just, it was irritating. But anyway, um, I was recruiting for the Gal oh, excuse me, for the Dickinson Police Department, came out here to the college to speak to the academy class, and was told that the director of the uh, criminal justice program was retiring, so I went in and put in for it. Not expecting to get the job, but, um, you know, I put in for it. Well, lo and behold, I got a call, and I got the job. And I am so glad I did. I really enjoyed teaching here. I kind of like police work. I don't like all the paperwork that goes with it, all that administrative stuff that we have to do that just, it's kind of boring. But, again, you got the good with the bad. The good is you students, the bad is all the stuff behind it. But, you know, that kind of, it kind of goes with things. It's like, I have yet to find a police officer who says, oh, my favorite thing about police work is writing reports. You just don't see that. Well, that's about it about myself. Um, I'm going to get out of the way and we'll go ahead and talk about the course. I'm going to go under the assumption that you know how to log into Blackboard. If you're getting watching this video from an email link I sent you and you can't get into Blackboard, email me and we'll get you some help in getting into Blackboard. But hopefully everybody can. So when you launch into Blackboard, you'll, ha you'll land on, uh, and you go to My Courses, pull up this class, you'll land on the dashboard page. The only thing here for you to look at is going to be the announcement. And whenever I send an announcement out, I will also send it as an email. So you get both the, the announcement here and an email. Um, I will be sending out announcements about once a week with a, you know, a weekly update video attached to it and with a, what's due this week. Um, you got due dates over here. It's going to show things due. If it says nothing's due this week, don't believe it. I'm not using the Blackboard's due dates. You're going to have to look at the course schedule. The way I've got the course set up, you can work ahead. Uh, things are released based upon completing things. It doesn't work out using Blackboard's um, due dates because it, if things are late, then they require you to, before the student could be released, I would have to be able to grade the paper. And, you know, in a course that's running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that's just, you know, it just doesn't work out. So. No due dates in the system other than your research paper. 
Uh, everything else is uh, kind of an open uh, get it done by the due date that is posted in the Start Here page or in the weekly content. And it's very important that you get it done because that's how we take role in attendance and we'll get to that when we get into the, uh, the, the course syllabus. Now, it, for as far as navigation, below the dashboard is the course material section with Start Here. That's where you've got your your syllabus, your, I, I post my office hours there. When I get them settled, I'll have them in there. Uh, there's a, a link to where, with the name of the textbook and the course schedule. Uh, I think I usually have a link to my grades in there um, and things like that. Below that is the weekly content. That's where the meat and potatoes of the course is. Uh, each week has its own folder and it lists what's due that week. We'll look at that last. The next thing is the exam tab. That's where you go to when you have to take the major exams. And then there's the research paper tab. I've got uh, other links in here to email, uh, a link to my grades. Uh, there's the virtual meeting room, which we're going to be doing an online orientation class that will go through this meeting room, but I'm going to send it link because I'm going to do one for the, one um, orientation for all of my classes. So you'll have um, not just one session, but there will be several sessions that you can log into. And then we've got things like technical support uh, that you can get support. There's career coach. There's a link to the library there. So let's go back up and we're going to do the start here first. The first thing on it is going to be the, um, the, the uh, um, syllabus. Below the syllabus, we'll have the class schedule, which is subject to change. If it does change, I will be sending out announcements. But if you kind of look at it, we generally have one chapter per week. There's actually one week because this book only has uh, 13 chapters. There's one week where there is uh, um, just a research paper due. We don't have a chapter to do that week. There is also a follow-up discussion due that week, but uh, you know, that's kind of the exception. Every other week you're going to be looking at one chapter. Uh, the first week there's an introduction. The last week there's just a final exam, uh, a, a final discussion, and some follow-up discussion. Um, below that, it's, this is your textbook. It's Corrections Day. You can get it through the bookstore. Um, they're actually doing a curbside service at the bookstore. I believe you call them and make your order and they come to you so you don't have to go in the building and then move locations temporarily. So you can kind of uh, uh, you know, go to the web page and you'll see. And then I will have my office hours on here once I figure out what they're going to be. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't go by my office hours if you need to talk to me. Um, send me an email telling me you need to talk to me about what, and you know, it's your degree plan, if it's about something about the course, and include, uh, you know, give me the best times for, for us to meet. It doesn't have to be during my office hours. I'm, I'm up usually by 5 in the morning, out running. Um, I'll be glad to talk to you after I get back from my run, which is you know, 6, 6.30, uh, 7 o'clock more likely. Um, or even up to 10 o'clock at night. Uh, I'm not going to meet with you at 3 o'clock in the morning, but, uh, you know, pretty much any time from you know, 6 a.m. To, to 10 p.m., we can have a virtual meeting. Uh, but when you send me an email, tell me what it's about so I can have the material prepared for it, um, and give me a phone number to call you so we can actually call, I can call to set up the meeting. It's easier done by phone than... And, and tell me when to call you. I mean, if you're at work and can't get to your phone, uh, tell me I get off of work at 6, call me in for 6, something like that, and we will get the meeting set up where we can go over things. Hey, and it may be something that I can take care of in the phone call uh, before we actually have to set up a meeting. But if, if it's like your degree plan, I want to post up the degree plan in writing on the screen. It's a lot easier to understand that way. Okay, so we're going to look at the syllabus now. And I'm going to let you know that this is a template syllabus that's used campus-wide. There are things that are unique to the course. The unique things are what we're going to go over. And this course is Correctional Systems. I've got some notes at the beginning. This is a not a self-paced course. However, you can work ahead, but you can't work behind. So it's a 16-week course. If you want to finish it in five weeks, which is what we do in the summer, it's the same material, Go ahead and finish it. The only thing that you won't be able to do um, in that five weeks is all the follow-up posts that you need to make. Uh, you'll have to come back and do those later on, or you know, that's about the only thing that would kind of slow you down from completing everything. But I mean, you, you can complete it whenever you want. 
You cannot work behind schedule because then you will be counted as absent and eventually you'll lose uh, uh, letter grades off your final grade. Now the major exams and the introductory quiz in this course must be taken using the Honorlock proctoring extension, which is an extension to the Chrome browser. You'll need to use Chrome browser. No other browser will work with it. And it works on any system that allows you to use the full version of the Chrome browser, which is going to be any Windows, uh, any uh, Apple computer, or any um, of the uh, Chromebooks. Uh, it can be a laptop, it can be a desktop. What it can't be, it does not work on mobile devices such as cell phones or tablets. It won't work on your iPad. Uh, you know, if you've got a hacked version of the iPad that runs the full Chrome browser, then maybe it work. I don't know, uh, but it, it generally does. It doesn't work on a standard uh, tablet or cell phone because they don't have the full version of the Chrome browser. You will also need a webcam and a microphone. You'll need your student ID. If you don't have it, you can't get to the campus to get it. Uh, you'll be able to use your driver's license instead, and you do need an internet connection. Um, you're not going to be able to test on campus because the campus is pretty much shut down right now. So um, you've got to make sure if you don't have access. Um, the college had some computers uh, that they were lending out in, in certain circumstances. Uh, you'd have to contact your advisor or, about that or, or get with me and I'll, I'll get you connected to the right person. And you will need to have... Um, um, uh, I mean, you, you, you'll, you'll need to have some kind of a decent internet connection. Um, you know, the, I know at one time they were going to set up on campus so you could drive to campus and sit in your car uh, and connect to the Wi-Fi outside some of the buildings. I don't know if that's the case, but, uh, you know, but that would be an option possible. Uh, and communicating with me, definitely go through email. If you call my office number, I'm not there. They don't allow us on campus, with the exception of when I'm teaching the police academy. I will not be on campus. Uh, now, that is all subject to change. So if you, send, if you call me and you leave a message, I'll get a, an email telling me that when you left me a message. Uh, why don't you just send me an email? You can put in the information that you need and it, it, you know, kind of save an extra step in there. Um, as far as this course, the course is a study of the role in communities and corrections, uh, community programs for adults, juveniles, and administration of community programs, and community programs, things like probation and so forth. Legal issues, future trends in, in community treatment. The student will be required to make one, well, actually no campus visit because of the things being shut down. Um, we're going to do that by video. We're probably going to have a discussion group where you'll watch other students' videos and um, you know have to comment on or actually ask questions of them. We'll talk about that um, as the semester develops. We're, we're working on trying to get some upgrade to the software to allow y'all to post your videos directly in the discussion board. If not, I'll probably be posting them. We'll, we will see and you will get more information on that in the future. The student learning outcomes. Describe the organization, operation of correctional systems and alternatives uh, to institutionalization. Uh, describe the treatment and rehabilitation program. Differentiate between short-term incarceration and long-term institutional environments. Evaluate current and future correction issues. And then identify the constitutional rights applicable to the correction setting. Uh, your book uh, well, we already showed it to you in Blackboard. You can go to the college bookstore and, and get it. Um, here's another co copy of the course outline. The one in Blackboard will be the most, you know, directly in Blackboard will be the most up to date. Um, prior to the semester, I have to post this uh, syllabus online, so it won't change. If there's changes, the one in Blackboard, I, I will post an update and we'll send a message out. As far as the course, there are three major exams and a final, so a total of four major exams. They are all 50 question exams except the final, and the final has 50 questions covering new material and an additional 30 questions covering the material from the first three exams. Uh, so you, you, they're all multiple choice. There may be a few uh, true and false questions added in there and possibly some matching, uh, and, and that's about it. Now, again, you're taking it with the honor lock system, and this system monitors what you have on your screen. It's got a camera that monitors what's going on. I allow you to use your personal notes in the textbook to the, during the exam. 
Uh, I would recommend using the digital version of, of both of these. You don't have to, you can use your hard copy if you wish. The notes that you take are your personal notes. It is not going to be, uh, I'm not going to allow you to use web searches. No study sheets from other sources, practice exams, nothing from Quizlets. You can't cut and paste the quizzes from the course into a document. You can take notes from the quizzes. Uh, as uh, the discussions for the class will be um, an exam review, and you will be able to look at other students. In fact, you are going to be required to look at other students and comment on the difference between theirs and yours as part of the course. Well, if they got a different answer than yours, they might be right, you might be wrong. You can take their answer and paste it into your document. Leave your answer because you might have been right about what the, the question on the exam was going to be about. So leave them both. You're going to have three about three in each class, uh, each test, uh, chapters. Take all three of those and combine them into one document. It's easier for you to search and then save it. You can open it up on your computer and you're allowed to look at it. I'm going to be notified by Honorlock anytime you look at it. They, you know, we get these little alerts um, when we review your exam. As long as it's notes that you prepared or the textbook, there's not a problem. If it's a web search, if it's uh, if I see something that came from uh, you know any other source, then you're cheating and you can't cheat in this class. You will fail the class if you're caught cheating. That means if you're caught cheating on an exam, if you're caught cheating by turning in a plagiarized paper, you will fail the class. You know, the only other option is to drop the course. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's open book. It is open uh, notes. So you've got that opportunity. Use your own stuff. Don't, don't get caught cheating in a criminal justice class. It is not, uh, not going to look good for you. Um, the other thing that I want to bring up is, is that we've got in it, um, you, you've got time to look up some answers, but you only got 50 minutes to complete the, the 50 question quizzes, 80 for the final. You don't have time to look up every answer. Uh, finish the test first. Uh, guess for the answer and write a note. I need to go back and look at question five and then navigate back to question five and look it up when you have time. Uh, this summer, I uh, had a student who was having problems with the proctoring system. There were some navigation issues. Hopefully, it's already cleared up. If not, we've got to work around that that, that is uh, in place for it. Um, but um, I'm watching him take the test, and he is on, like, question 20 out of 50, and he's already, like, 35-minute point. He's only got you know, 15, 20 minutes left or so, and more than half the test. There was no way he was going to finish the exam, so he's kind of lucky that the, that the system crashed on him, because uh, I did. When I emailed him, said, okay, I've got everything set up, go ahead and retake it and all, and I said, oh, by the way, don't spend so much time. You're not going to, you would not have finished the, I mean, he wouldn't have come close to finishing uh, if, if he kept at the same pace, so just keep that in mind. Every semester I have at least one person that doesn't finish it. Usually they're missed by one or two questions, but still, it, you know, finish the quest, the test first. There's always a bonus. That's worth five points at the end. If you, if you know the bonus and you don't get to the end, you lose five points, so it's not quite worth it. And in addition to the exams, there are going to be quizzes over each chapter, and you will have to pass those with a 70 or better in order to move to the next chapter. Um, kind of like there are two quizzes that you've got to finish with 100% before you go to chapter one. The introductory quiz that covers this material and the uh, APA plagiarism video, and then there's one on the research paper. You have to make 100 on 10 question test. You can retake them as many times as you want and the questions don't change. Same with the quizzes, 10 questions. Uh, you'll need to make a 70 or better. If you make a 90 on the test, uh, you know, retake it till you make 100, because it, it, you know, it's, uh, as you'll find in a minute, it's 15% of your grade. If you make a 90 on it and you retake it and you kind of have a you know, brain fluctuation, um, don't worry. And you make a 70 on, and the next time you still have a 90 because I've got it set up where you get the highest score. Okay, your research paper, and again, the campus visit, unless things change, is off. We'll be doing it by video, so you know, disregard the campus visit. That is when we don't have a pandemic going on. 
Um, I'm going to have you all do it by video, as I mentioned earlier. But you're going to require to have a personal interview in this the, the, the uh, paper, um, and you'll be required to make a video of you presenting it to at least three people, and uh, then they'll have the camera on you. Five to ten minute presentation, doesn't take much. You'll then upload it into to Blackboard. There'll be the PowerPoint will be uploaded one place and the, the video another. The videos are too big for using the Blackboard system, so we have a workaround called uh, um, Share Share Stream, I believe it's called. And um, you'll upload it there. You'll be able to look at other students' videos. In fact, we're probably going to have a discussion where you'll have to as, as part of the discussion uh, to move on with the class. So we'll talk about that when the time comes. Still working things out. We've got some software they're trying to get that allows us to do it directly. If not, I'm going to have to upload all of them. Okay, participation discussion. That is going to be the discussion boards. There are several of them. The first week we've got two of them. One of them introducing yourself. Very simply, tell us who you are. And then there's a paraphrase exercise where you're going to read an article, you're going to close it out, and then you're going to summarize the article. Uh, those two, and you'll do follow-up posts. Whenever you have a discussion, you will do the, the, the original post one week. The next week, you'll be responsible for at least three follow-ups. You'll get 70% for the original discussion and 10 points for each of the substantive follow-up posts. Now, after the first week, each chapter will have a discussion that will cover an exam review. Um, you will fill out the, the exam review, it, it's a Word document, and then you will cut and paste that document directly into a post. Do not make it as an attachment, particularly if you're using that software coming from Apple that it does not play friendly with anybody other than Apple, because uh, I can't read it, and I'm not going to go through the effort of, of converting it. You need to directly post, paste the answers into Blackboard, and uh, I'll probably show you how to do that um, on this uh, uh, later in this video. And then you will have to read other people's posts and find at least three different people or you know that, where the answer is different than yours. And you will place your answer and their answers and you compare them. Hey, you said that you know that thingamajig was a whatchamacallit, and I said it was a, a, a thingamajig, a, a, a widget, whatever. So you'll talk about the differences. When you do that, you'll get credit. When you say, hey, great post, I love your post, and hey, you got some really good answers, you will not get credit. So you do have to compare and contrast. And then there will be a final discussion at the end where we'll talk about what, you know, what your thoughts on the course. You don't have to do follow-up posts to that. I already mentioned that plagiarizing something will force you to fail the class. We don't have to go over that again. Don't do it. Uh, you can't use a paper that you wrote for another class. That's self-plagiarism. Don't do that. I've actually had students try that before. They wrote it for a different class and uh, submitted it several semesters later. If you wrote it for another instructor, it probably didn't have the right setup to begin with. Now your grading summary. The major exams count 15% of your grade each, as do the quizzes. The final exam is 20%. That research paper and presentation is 10%. And then participation in the discussion is also 10%. Now keep in mind that you must complete all material. We're going to talk about class attendance. Um, there, Other than the orientation, there's no time that we, we're going to do anything where you have to be at a particular place at a particular time. Unless things change dramatically, you're not going to be coming to campus to present your, your, your uh, research paper. So let's just assume that that's not going to happen. You will do, be doing it by video. Each week, there will be several things that are due, whether it's discussions, uh, quizzes, exams, research papers, the video, whatever. Everything that's due. If you get everything done, by the deadline, which is going to be Thursday night at midnight, then you'll be counted as present. Quite frankly, it will probably be 7 o'clock, 7.30 in the morning on Friday morning before I run the reports. And I'll run all the reports for each class uh, before I actually get down in there and I'll save them so we'll you know, kind of keep things fair. Um, if you get it done a little after midnight on Friday and it's done before I run the report, you're good to go. But do it by midnight in case I've got insomnia one night and start running them right after midnight. Um, but anyway, if you get everything completed, you're going to be marked as present. 
If you're late on anything, then you will be, uh, or, you know, you got, you just, you missed one quiz. Well, then you're marked as late. Two lates will be equivalent of one absent. And if you just didn't do anything, you didn't meet any of the deadlines for the week, then you're marked as absent. So after three absences, then, or the equivalent of three absences, you will lose one letter grade off of your final semester average. So let's say you've got four weeks where you turned in your paperwork late. So that's going to be four lates, which equals to two absences. And then you, you, you've got one week where you didn't do anything. So that's a third absence. Well, the next week you don't do the discussions. Well, now you're marked late. Now you've got three and a half absences, which is more than three. You just lost the letter grade. And if you're late with material two more times, you've lost two letter grades. Because, again, that would be marked as a full absence, so you would have four and a half absences. So kind of keep in mind that if you've got an A average and you've got four and a half absences, you just lost two letter grades. So now you've got a C. And what's worse if you had a C average in the class and you had lost the same thing, you've just failed the course. So make sure you can make the deadline. The deadlines are very important. Um, it's how we keep rolling the class. Uh, now the rest of this is standard material. Please read it. And if you have any questions on it, uh, shoot me an email and we will talk about it. Um, and, uh, you know, just, again, most of it's standard language. Uh, so if there's anything you don't understand, definitely get a hold of me and uh, you know, you're, you're kind of responsible for it. So you might not have to read the same thing in every class, but at least one time read the entire, once each semester, because they change each semester, read at least one complete um, syllabus to make sure that, you know, you, you, you know what's going on with it. Okay, so now we're going to move into the other areas of the course material. We'll go ahead and start with the exams. Now, the exams are not going to be visible to you until you have completed um, the required for that exam. So for exam one, you have to uh, participate in discussions one through three and make 70 or better on quizzes one through three. Uh, this exam is due September 24th. And if you can look at each one, I'll show you what their due date is and um, what you have to have covered before you can get there. I have a thing on the Honor Lock. There is a video for you to watch on Honor Lock. Please watch it. Uh, it tells you how it works. It seems to work better than the old Respondents Lockdown browser, but there can have st still been some hiccups. We just started using it with the, the second summer semester. Um, so I've only had uh, maybe 40 students or 40 tests given with it. Uh, and there have been a few hiccups, but we're, we're working them out. Uh, again, if you have not taken a test using Honor Lock, watch this beautifully done video. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Welcome. Mini on how Honor Lock works, and um, you'll be able to, well, kind of see what's going on. Um, you will also have to take the introductory quiz using Honor Lock. The reason for that is I want to make sure that you see how it works before you are taking an exam that, that's, in, you know, that's kind of important. Um, once you've completed the material, exam one will show up right here, right above the Honor Lock video. Uh, and once you get the material done for exam two, it will show up above exam one and so forth. And again, you can work ahead. So even though the final exam is not due until December, if you want to take it, on October 1st and you complete all the material, you can do so. Just keep in mind, you still may owe me some uh, final discussions. And sometime during the semester, you know, just keep checking your email because sometime during the semester um, you will have the course evaluations posted. And I don't know when those come out, so I can't tell you when they'll be posted. But um, those things will be there. Okay, the research paper tab. Uh, again, there is a video for you to watch, so I'm not going to spend any time on it. Uh, research paper in this class is due on the October 1st, and the PowerPoint is due the 8th. PowerPoint and video presentation. Watch the video um, as far as uploading it. Um, well, the, um, the alternative method of the share, I still have to post that here, but I will get it posted, obviously, way before you all. Um, are ready to, to submit any of your material. But you will, on the same page, if I scroll down to it, select your topics, 
on this page. And again, you watch the other video, it tells you how to do so. Um, you do have that quiz you have to make 100% on, so be sure to take that before you can go to Chapter 1. Now we'll go to the weekly content, and we're going to start with Chapter 1. Everything on chapter, or Week 1 will be visible to you, but starting with Week 2, things are not visible until you finish the work for the week before. So for this week, you'll watch a weekly update video that will be posted. Uh, you will watch uh, the, the introductory video, which you are watching now, and the APA plagiarism video. You'll take that introductory quiz and making 100%. You'll introduce yourself on the discussion boards uh, and complete the, the paraphrase discussion exercise. There are two different discussion boards. Uh, you'll watch the research paper video, take that quiz, make 100 on it, and select your research paper topic. So that's what you do in the first week. Everything is due by midnight Thursday night. Class starts on Monday, so this week is a short week. After that, I've got everything set up, the class, the material, again, you can work ahead at any time, but the material covers from Friday to the next Thursday, the way I have it set up in the discussion board, everything but the first week. Uh, this introduction will take the place of the 2019 one right here, and again, the quiz is that the honor, same honor lock video, you only have to watch it once, if you took summer classes and you already know how to do it, you don't have to watch it at all. And, but you, when you click on this video, it will bring you into the honor lock system. And it, 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 uh, it should bring you into the honor lock with instructions and so forth. And there's the launching pad for that. So we'll go back though. If you don't want to launch that, you can watch the video on that. Um, okay. Uh, okay. There. It let me back out. So get all that work done. Um, and then we're going to go ahead to the last thing we're going to look at is week two. Uh, on week two, you will be able to see the what's due this week, the learning objectives for that particular chapter. Uh, you'll be able to get to the discussion board, and then you'll be able to get to the, the follow-up. One thing I didn't mention on the first week, and, and we'll mention here, I have an Ask Your Instructor discussion board. This is an open discussion that I want everybody to subscribe to. Uh, and I'll show you how to subscribe to it. Simply click on the, the, the link there and click on subscribe. When you do that, anytime someone asks a question in there, then you will, um, you'll get an email. And there won't be that many questions. Typically, in a class, I'll get maybe three or four questions the entire semester. And this form is to be used to ask questions about the lectures, about the textbook, about something that you don't understand, something that seems out of place, maybe something on the research paper, that would be of particular interest not to just to you but other students. I will answer them in the, uh, in the discussion board, but I will also include an email with the same answer uh, sent to the student who asked the discussion. So you'll, you'll get it both ways. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll get it in the, uh, you know, again in the discussion board and as a separate email. This is not a place where you ask questions about your grades or any other personal questions, anything about your degree paying and so forth. For those type of questions, send me an email from your college account to my account. Send it from your personal account, and I realize it's from your personal account. I'm going to send you an email thanking you for your email from your personal account, but reminding you that because of FERPA rules, the college requires all email concerning you know, student activity uh, to go through the college account. So it's not a big deal. You just resend it, and um, you know I probably already have the answer ready for you when you send it. Okay, we're going to go back to this discussion real quick. Um, the questions are all going to be found in a file. If you click on the file, save it to your computer, however you want. Hopefully, this one will open up. When I talk about cutting and pasting it directly, you want to, to uh, highlight everything in, on. In, using a, 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 a Windows computer, you get Control A, it might be Command A, uh, might be right click, whatever, uh, depending on what software, and then you want to put it into your um, your clipboard, Control C, Command C, again, which, however your computer works, and it will then be in your clipboard. You'll simply go back to the discussion board, you click on the discussion, uh, you have to create a thread before you can can uh, read anybody else's discussions, which means you cannot create a blank thread and expect 
to uh, look at everybody else's answers before you. And I had one do that this summer, and it, you know, it was six of them. It's a two two week course. I have occasionally had students that clicked on things and didn't attach things or whatever. Okay, that's a mistake. When you do it, I think it was five times when I finally snapped what he was doing. Um, the only reason for doing it, he'd, he'd have that, and then two hours later, he'd have his answers. Uh, that was cheating. And I, I did. I sent him, simply sent him an email. If you do it again, you're failing the class. Don't cheat. And uh, he apologized. But, yeah, he, he knew what he was doing. Um, so you will, you will um, make a subject line with your name in it. And then you will simply click into the text box. Um, you, you can't use the right clicks. If you try like click and paste, it comes up with a warning telling you that uh, Blackboard telling you to use the key stroke, which is either control or command. So uh, to paste it, it's going to be control V or command V. You'll hit that and it will paste your answers into the system. It's so much easier to read. You don't have to worry about compatibility. Everybody will be able to see it. So this is the way it has to be done. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out because I don't really need to start a discussion. So that's about all I have for this introductory video. Be sure you get your quizzes done. Uh, watch the ADA video. And if you have any questions, again, shoot me an email and we will, uh, I'll do the best I can to answer your questions. Looking forward to working with each and every one of you this semester and I will talk to you later.